Well, today we are at the distillery Coquille here in Maiguez, and uh, we're hopefully going to get a tour of the distillery. So, and uh, of course, the requisite tasting. So, uh, join us as we go in and uh, partake of the tour. Buen dia. So here we are in the waiting room and the uh, the tasting room. See some of the stuff that they're aging. I guess and that's their barrel room. Here they've got uh, some of their wares on display. You historical photos. The place hasn't been around that long. But here's a selection of their they call moonshine, which is, which is uh, pictorial in, in uh, Spanish. It's how they uh, process the sugar cane. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna be trying for the day. So you both over 21. You, look, um, you wow. look like you got a You, 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 you want to you want a card? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that's, Thanks that's, for asking. That's though. my only joke of the day. Yeah. So this is a uh, what is pitorro? This is the essence of pitorro. This is a white pitorro. It's a pitorro that has a simple distillation system, and it's not any flavors on it. It's just that that alcohol and it tastes like that that sugar cane aftertaste you, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and you take a shot and see that's a uh, pitorro that's the first i don't know if you guys know but back in the days pitorro was illegal it, it still is illegal in, in a kind of way so the only way you can make it a uh, pitorro legal is to for example us we are the brand we adapted the name pitorro it's like if you adapt the name Moonshine and you make a brand that's Moonshine and you sell Moonshine. So that's what we did with Pitorro. Pitorro, it's, a, <laughs> it's been known as Pitorro for day and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So our ancestors, our grandfathers, and all the way up, they used to do uh, jugs like this. So a Moonshine jug, uh, it's Pitorro. Mm -hmm. But we make it out of sugarcane. And that was how they used to do it in the old days. But when you get that, that was 50%, 60% alcohol. That's really strong, Pitorro. So if you drink a shot out of that, you, you're not gonna like it. Yeah, it, yeah. Ooh, I, I, I had a shot of Pitorro with that. You wouldn't drink a second one. So we started playing with the formula. So we lowered the alcohol percentage on a Pitorro so it would be more enjoyable. But when you see that stamp right there, when we first started doing Pitorro, you see it's, it's 50% alcohol. Mm -hmm. What is this? So this one's 39. Oh, okay. <laughs> For the same reason, when you have a 50% alcohol, you, you don't like it. And we start taking out flavors out on the, on the market. We took out all the fruits, the, the strawberry and the pineapple. We thought of their uh, flavors are 22% alcohol per volume. And then we got the passion fruit, coconut and tamarind that they're 15% alcohol. Then we took out a new product, a uh, new flavor that's Pitorro Cafe, and that's 35% alcohol, it's, uh, it's higher. So Whoa, 39, 22, 15, and 35. <laughs> so they different percent, different, different people, different tastes, some people I like really- I like the taste of tamarind. Yeah, you I like tamarind? I love tamarind. So yeah. let's, we're gonna go try tamarind. So so I'm the driver, so just, okay, a, just, just a little bit. Little bit. Yeah. This really sweet tropical fruit, mm -hmm. it's really sweet, how it's really good. So that's the first taste, and we're gonna go about this way so I can explain you how do you do pitorro or moonshine. Have you done moonshine before? You know someone who does moonshine? Uh, no. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't had the corn so moonshine. Before. How do you do pitorro? Pitorro, you basically, to make sugar, to make alcohol, you can use sugar. So you get melazas. Melazas mm -hmm. is the, the sugar juice from the sugar cane. Mm -hmm. It's called melazas. You get that melazas. You burn it. This is what we call an alambique. It's an alambique. It's, a, it's like an oven. So you in that in that alambique, you burn that melazas, that sugar cane, and then you, the the alcohol is what's gonna go up, and it's gonna be ending up as being as uh, pitorro. That's 
the basic of how to do the color, that's a simple cancellation system. This is the one that they did use, this was in function in 2007, 2008, that's right. how they got their first destillation license. Really? It was with, this it, with this? This, this, this with, 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 homemade bomb. With this, with this equipment? <laughs> yes. So that's how, oh, that's, they, crazy. that's how they got the license. They were just a smaller distillery back in the day. Now they've just grown up and they have built a better <laughs> engineering system that yeah. we're going to go and see now. From This is what they started. Wow. And now we're going to go and see what, what they what can produce these amounts. Because that you can produce just certain yeah. amounts. And our premium rum that we have is uh -huh. called Carjackers. It's an aged rum. So it's a rum taking aging right here. We got a aging when we first opened them. It's a two year. That's the minimum time that we will let these barrels sit. <laughs> and maximum all the way up, we're gonna know to when. But the biggest one that we have now is seven years. The, the oldest one that we have aging seven years. But these ones are new ones. These two are the other ones. Are these oak barrels? Yes, they're white oak barrels. Mm -hmm. We used to export them from a. Uh, from uh, Europe, and now we uh, we get them uh, in Jordan. Now we get them from United States. I don't know exactly where, but uh, it's a company. It's called the Barrel Mill American Oak. And and, and these, have, look, these look these uh, look new barrels. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I, I know we, some people you, you some use, use, use barrels. Use yes. barrels. Yeah. We will use the used barrels in, in the future because we have different products. So, but first, uh, for car jackets, for this product that we got here, it's only new barrels. So okay. it has to be new barrels, uh -huh. just so it has that essence. So of keeps the flavor pure, probably. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You don't want that. No, no burning, no, nothing. You just want pure. You want that flavor, that white oak oh, flavor. No, oh, you like uh, aged products? Are you guys drinkers? Well, I, like, I like the sm I like the smoother one. Right? Other, other. So we're gonna go and try that one. At the end. That's. Our best rum, and that's our highest rum. That's a 60% alcohol per right, gallon. So that's 120 proof. That's, yeah, yeah. If you run out of gas, you and your car, you can These ones are like a uh, 40 year now. Four year. Four year uh, in barrels. It's really hard to keep to age a product because you make if you, a rum. If you're, if you're drinking it, Exactly, but it, it, as a brand, when you make a rum, you spend all this money, you make a rum, you produce it and all that, then you gotta let it sit for two or four years. Yeah. What income do you get in two or four years? Yeah, zero. <laughs> so it's complicated, but yeah. I think that you gotta have different products, and that's why they started with Pitotro, now they, they can afford to do an age yeah. rum that is really expensive yeah. and complicated. Cause yeah. Really complex inventory management, yeah, I guess. Yeah, this is a, a government uh, storage, so you see both of them, they're on, uh, they have to be like closed. So to be, uh, they have uh, locks, so government facility, a uh, government uh, agency, that's mm -hmm. like a Hacienda, I don't know if you've heard that before. Hacienda, have you heard of Hacienda? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so but the reason that they have control over the locks so that they can so they can prove that, that they have aged as long as they have. I yes. mean, they're the managers of yes. that. Yes, and, and also uh, so there's nothing illegal going on, not stealing rum or selling uh, batches without paying taxes. Cause oh, I see. Before this, is, when the product is complete, you gotta uh, put it into the production room and you gotta uh, account for it and uh, see how many uh, gallons and how many bottles out of it. So that's why it's closed and nobody takes out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you, have a, do you have a Hacienda guy uh, who, yeah, who, 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 who works guy. here? Yeah, yeah he, he has a little not, office here. If he's not here, we cannot produce our bottle. So oh, wow. Going back to the Pitotro, it's the same process there. You got the, the big tank filled up with a molasses, that's the sugar cane juice, okay. and it's going to go to that oven right there. You see that oven with the silver, uh, like the silver box at the end? Oh, yeah. So that, that's an alambique, but that's a big oven. That's gonna burn that big amount of sugar, and it's gonna the alcohol. It's gonna go up, and it's gonna be stored in that big tank. Right. And then from there, it's gonna go into the condensation we call it, and uh, cold and hot. It's gonna go through that spiral. So what that does is the alcohol keeps going up, and all the sediments and all that, where all the bad uh, smells and taste, it's gonna go down. So what you want 
and moving is the outcome, and that's what you want to maximize. So that's what the, the that has a name, it's a okay. spiral. That spiral, uh -huh. that's what it does. It cleans the, the outcome. And at ah. the end, for a big batch of analysis, you're going to have a 70, 80, 90% outcome of the bone. Hmm. This, if you get closer, you can smell this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. What does it smell like? That's pitone. That's the essence of sugar cane. Yeah. That, that's pitone. It's the first insulation. And that's how you got it in the old days. Is it the, the thing that people used to drink? But when you drink that, that's a strong shot. You don't want it. It's really dry, really strong. It's 70, 80% alcohol. You cannot control it. We can't control it because they already have all the heat and cold and all the formulas gone. So they, they just got the system going on. Right now they are distilling, but they're in the second destination probably. This is turned off for the day. Once you got here a big batch of alcohol, that's probably 70, 80% alcohol, 90% alcohol. We've got it 90, 90, 90 something is our maximum that we've got. Right. Almost here, 90, 90. This is for the carjackers. When the carjackers are spraying, we're going to this tank and this will pump it all the way to the okay. production. So, so two distillations for pitoro. Yes, and for the rum, it's a, a four times. Four times, four times. For, 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 for your for your we for your blanco, it's four times and distilled. No, for no. the pitoro, it's two times, but we got a different brand that is not pitoro. It's a rum. It's a white rum. Okay. And for the white rum, it's four times. Four times. Still, yeah. Well, that is bitch, a bitch is, bitch is nice and smooth. Yes, it is because it doesn't it doesn't have that uh, sugar cane that pitoro uh -huh. after which is more like alcohol, like rum. Oh, all the, all the tubing here. This is incredible. And then this is uh, Once you got your powder done, you got your alcohol, you got it going to bottle it. So you're going to rinse the bottles with the system. You're going to rinse the inside of the bottles. You're going to, that uh, equipment is going to put the same amount of alcohol on each bottle. Then you're gonna send it to the side and it's gonna put the depends on what product we have. If we have a pitorro fruits, strawberry and pineapple, we gotta cut pine, uh, fruit chunks and we gotta put them inside of the bottle. We weight those uh, fruits and they put the same amount of fruits on each bottle. And then you do all that by hand. Yes. By, by these by these couple by yeah. these couple of people back yeah. here. They gotta cut the, the fruits and they gotta put this And then they, and they, 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 they put it in the bottle by hand. Then they put that, that machine and that's going to put the rest of the pitoro on the formula. Uh huh. Wow, that's incredible. So, yeah, that's a. Yeah. Then they stamp it, they, they put the cork on them, they seal them, and it goes through a hacienda. Uh huh. That office right here. It's the government office, so he had that up here. So gives an account of uh, how much alcohol we use, how much bottles we're actually making. It's not the same as not having somebody here and then you did 10 bottles and then you did 100 bottles. But that's what he's here for. If we yeah. say we did 100 bottles, he's, he's going to confirm that we did 100 bottles and not that way. Then. So, so I see a new box here from the last time I was here. Is it Rincon? Is that the... Uh, are you, oh, okay. are you uh, so, distilling that for somebody else, or, yes. or, or is that yes. a new a new brand for yeah, you? We, no, we, they, that's a that's a. <laughs> yeah, have you heard of Rounding Kong? No. You never heard of Rounding Kong no. before? No. Okay, so that's a, a rum brand from Puerto Rico, but uh, it's not our brand. But we produce the rum for them. So yeah, we do that rum, but it, we just produce it for them. Uh -huh. and they, they, it's their brand. They do all the stuff. But we yeah. produce yeah. Rounding Kong. We produce a uh, uh, pitorro. Uh, Ron Coqui and Carjackers, okay, uh -huh. four brands that we do yeah. it here. I mean, and, but, they, but they, I mean, it's not 
It's not what, this is not what I would normally expect. You know, okay. you expect to see, you know, you expect to see bottles, like hundreds of bottles lined up going on, going on a conveyor belt here. But it looks like, you know, you, you go and you line up like eight bottles at a time and, and fill and, them up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. We got that new equipment. You see the, at the end, that's what it, what it is for. Uh -huh. It's an equipment that it doesn't need no manpower. So oh. the bottle will start empty on one side. It's going to end up all completed on the other side. Oh, really? But that equipment is not functioning yet because they're still installing it. Oh, okay, it. yeah, I can see that. It's new equipment. You see it's like oh, yeah. bothering in the middle of, of on the back of it, but uh -huh. that's because of it. It's going to do all the product. It's going to put the tap on it. It's going to put the stamp. It's going to seal it. It's going to put the date. All of it, literally. Wow. It's going to put the date. It, yeah. It's even going to fill the bottle. So I'm going to have to come back for another tour to watch the bottles go around. <laughs> this is the way we've done it now, so it's more hand. It's yeah. traditional hand on action, but since we want to produce more, we got to uh -huh. innovate, right. so mm -hmm. we do both. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we, we're not going to get rid of our employees. We're going to keep using them, but we're going to yeah. make double the production with the same employees. Oh, 35% alcohol. We're going to go start with that one since you were curious about it. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, so, 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 just, so just remember, just a little for me. Just a little for yeah. He just, he just wants a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. No, we got I mean, it. I mean, exactly. we'll, we'll take care of him. Thanks, thanks. I gotta, I gotta drive. He's a designated driver. He's drinking slow, I'm drinking. He's <laughs> drinking slow, man. Got that, got that. Nothing for you. Um, yes, I'll take some of whatever. <laughs> yes, I love mm. Yes, I love coffee, so uh, I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy this. Do you like coffee? So these are coffee. Mm -hmm. Caramelish. You get it. It's like an espresso. Did you see them? No, I didn't see them. Did you see them? 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 Did <laughs> it was a great day at the Pitoro uh, tasting and tour. It cost us ten ten dollars each, and of course uh, we went home with a few bottles of Pitoro because you just can't come here without uh, finding something that you really like. So if you're ever in the Maguez in the uh, the western part of the island, kind of stop by. I don't know. We spent maybe an hour, hour and a half here or so. Nice little tour of their of their distillery and uh, their tasting, and there's just the two of us on the tour, so it was pretty personalized. So uh, until next time, may your suitcase always be messy, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of our next video.